things are getting weird for little human brain friends. You know, the tiny human brains that you can grow from stem cells and have run a computer. For the last several years, since the inception of these little guys, researchers have been trying to incorporate them with AI and figure out how to make them better. Yes, tiny human brains make pretty decent computation tools, and there's a cloud that you can utilize them remotely. Two companies now, Final Spark and Cortical Labs, have opened up operations where they deploy thousands of these little guys in a warehouse and sell their computation remotely online. And of course, we have the very first brain organoid computer that you can purchase. It costs about $30,000 and you have to grow the brain organoids yourself. They live for about six months, although some researchers have gotten them to live for a year or more, and they work better in groups. We've also seen them operate a variety of different kinds of robots. They're very good with spatial recognition. They can move around a room and operate a body, which makes sense because our brains were kind of evolved to operate a body. My favorite is the spider robot. This was conceived by Allison Motri in UC San Diego. I'm still waiting on the paper from this. He told me it would come out in 2024, but I've yet to see the paper published. We've also seen them operate snake robots. This one came from a group that wanted to see if they could replicate the two halves of the brain and put two brain organoids in charge of running a snake robot. It worked. My hypothesis is people are trying to figure out the creepiest possible body to put these guys in. But back to this paper. There are some limitations on the brain organoids. It's hard to keep them alive for a long period of time. They almost always expire from hypoxia. That is a problem, because the longer they're alive, the more complex they grow to be, and the better they are at computation. I would have thought that you would want a single type of neuron to perform these tasks, but no. They do better in groups, and they do better with complex neural structures. So why not just grow them in a tower? That's exactly what they did. They grew them from single cells in matri gel, which is essentially mouse tumor jello. This gel allows them to grow into each other. They'll grow into just about anything next to each other. They operate very much like Legos. You can just pop them together. In this case, they were just grown near each other, and they grew little projections into other organoids. It actually does work, and the more that are together, the more complex their brainwaves become. You can see day 30 here with just 30 in the chip. But with 22 all in tandem, you can see they have much more complex brainwaves. Each one of these is an individual, and yeah, you can imagine if one perishes, when they add another, it can retrain it. This could allow them to do specific tasks, which we've already seen them get better at when operating in a chip, just with 16. There really is no limit here. You could have thousands of brain organoids all working together. We haven't really seen what kind of complex behaviors emerge when you have quite that many. You could also have individual brain components, each operating a different lobe of the brain coming together, and it might give us interesting computation power. I say interesting, we really don't know the capabilities of these guys. Now, when these guys were grown on a computer chip, like Final Spark does, they have 16 organoids to a chip, so if one expires, another one can just come in, and the others can train it. But if they're communicating through actual physical neural pathways, rather than a computer chip through electrodes, it does go faster. I could see an array like this work if one of them expires, which does tend to happen. They could excise it out and pop a new one in, and they do pretty well growing into other neural structures. We've seen examples where you took a brain organoid, grew it near the decapitated spine of a mouse, and it made projections and can even take control of the muscles of the mouse that is no longer a mouse. They have no problem hybridizing with anything. You can make mouse-human brain organoids, you can pop a brain organoid into the skull of a live mouse, and it'll make connections and start working with the mouse brain. They are essentially fetal brains, and if there's one thing we know about human brains is they'll just grow with anything. Do the best with what you got. That's why people who are born without limbs tend to use their other limbs pretty well. We adapt. What the brain structure will allow us to do is more complex computation. Brain organoids aren't good at handling data from LLMs, for example. They're not very good at linear information. They can learn language, though. They're far better when utilized for things like controlling a body or finding their way through spatial information, so navigation, for example. Largely, what brain organoids have been useful for is medication testing and development. This kind of structure could allow you to get a lot of information from just one little cube or it could be used for computation. This technology is still pretty nascent, for lack of a better pun. This kind of structure could actually allow us to have a brain organoid as large as our own brains, just made out of modular components suspended in mouse goo.